welcome to Loopy Mabel's Closet. My name's Jane and today's video is a little bit of catch up of what I've been sewing this week. Lots of floral gorgeousness on the rail behind me, sneak peek. So if you fancy a little bit of floral fabric extravaganza, because you know me, then please stay tuned. welcome back and if you just found me please don't forget to subscribe hit the bell and then you'll never miss out on any of my videos and also don't forget to give me that lovely little thumbs up as well if you enjoy watching my videos so yeah this week if you follow me and you follow me on Instagram you are gonna know I am a floral girl I just love floral fabrics I just love floral fabrics and um, I've made a lot of florals this week uh, I didn't make everything floral though, I did make one thing that was plain, even though it was embossed. I uh, made some trousers, I uh, made a dress, and I have been designing, tweaking, prototyping a new blouse stroke dress pattern, which I'll, obviously I will share all the details with you. So first things first, my wide leg pants, which you can see just here. I'll show you them in a second. Obviously, I'm going to pop loads of pictures up and little bits of footage of me in the garden, in the woods or whatever. Yeah, so you can see exactly what it looks like on me and I'll try and stand up as well and show you as we're going along. So yeah, so if you follow me, you'll probably be aware that I also blog for Felicity Fabrics, which is a UK fabric company and they just sell the most beautiful, exquisite fabrics. I'm not just saying that because I blog for them. I used to say this before I was a blogger for them. I bought their fabrics right from the very beginning when they first uh, opened the business on Instagram. You can follow them on Instagram and um, I've just always liked their choice of fabrics. They've got a really great eye for quality fabrics and then I became a blogger for them and then they had a blog team so I'm on the blogger team and there is a code that they have kindly given me for me to give to you if you'd like to purchase their fabrics. I'm not just saying this because I'm a blogger, I'm saying this because I absolutely love their fabrics and I can share a discount code with you so who's not going to want that? It's a 10% discount code which you can use over on their site for anything you like. It doesn't expire so you can use it as many times as you like. It's Jane 10, I'll put the link, I'll put the details as everything I mentioned in the description box below so don't worry, don't have to take notes, it will all be there and please help yourself and enjoy using that discount code. So my turn was to blog for them this month and we can choose fabrics what we want and I must plan a little bit better though when I choose my fabrics with Felicity because nine times out of ten I just get swap, I just get like blinkered by oh, all the pretty fabrics that they've got because obviously it's like a, I'm like a child in a candy shop choose what I want and obviously make it into something and blog about it for them so I see all the fabrics but I need to really stop stop I need to stop and take a few deep breaths count to 10 and think about the fabrics that I'm choosing because sometimes the fabrics that I've chosen they're sold out and they're no longer got so I really need to keep that in in mind because obviously it's got to be it's going to be worth me blogging about for a fabric and if they don't have it anymore so obviously I've got to consider that which I'm more aware of now and obviously maybe the seasons if I'm making things that maybe is in the winter fabric and we're in the summer you know things like that it's hard go it's hard going though I must admit I'm not gonna lie because I mean help yourself to fabrics I mean you know come on but anyway so I chose this beautiful and in fact if you're watching right now here in May, May the 8th, they have uh, some new colour corduroy in stock, including this one, and they have a discount code as well for it. They have, if it's still, if it's still in stock, they have some beautiful colours as well to choose from. But I chose the corn colour because it's like a golden yellowy mustard colour. <laughs> one of my colours and it's just a great colour for my wardrobe. I have an awful lot of items in my wardrobe that's mustard colour or old gold, you know, those those type of colours. Autumnal colours because I'm an autumn girl. I am a deep autumn in my colour, in my colour palette. 
Uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about with the colour palette, I do have a really good vlog on choosing your colour palette, which is brilliant for helping you decide which colours enhance your skin tone, your hair, your eyes, and then you choose the colours, those colours, to then make your garments with. It, I mean, you don't have to stick to those colour palettes, but they really do work for your particular skin tone so you could be cool you could be warm type of thing and my skin tone or my hair my eyes and everything i am warm deep autumn so those are the colors i go for and this is one of the colors and it really does work if the color these colors that i choose really do enhance my skin and get the best out of my wardrobe so i highly recommend you have a look at that blog if you haven't already and it does help you then think a bit more about what fabrics suit you because there's no point in buying things like expensive fabrics can be expensive and then oh that's pretty that's gorgeous I'm going to get it going to make it you put it on but there's something about it that's not quite right nine times out of ten it's not quite right because it doesn't suit you or it doesn't complement your skin tone or it could make you like wash wash you out or it could overwhelm you overwhelm your skin tone type of thing or do you know what I mean so it is worth definitely looking into that and then choose those colors so this is one of my colors and as soon as I saw it I thought yeah wide leg pants that's what I'm gonna make but luckily obviously it's corduroy and we're now in May I'm in England so you know we don't get heat waves so I should have really thought a little bit more about that but luckily they have just got a new stock in of all the corduroys and because it's like a lovely weight corduroy it's not really heavy and thick and wintry I can wear these in the summer easy and because the wide leg pants I chose that style so they're like you know like a loose summer type of look and I also shortened them so they're like a, a ankle grazer length a little bit bit higher than my ankle bone type of thing so I can wear them with my sandals with my little ballet pumps with my new white sneakers type of thing and ideally I can still wear them in the winter with some boots so I can wear these trousers all year round which is what I try to do nine times out of ten when I'm making things for my wardrobe I don't I just don't make things that I can only wear that in the summer I can only wear that in the autumn winter I like to be able to wear if I can all year round and as I say I'm in England so we don't get the extreme temperatures we don't get a really really cold winter and we don't get really really hot summers we have like middle of the road boring weather type of thing so I can get away with that and um, so I'll be able to wear these all the time so as I say I pop some pictures of me wearing them now from my blog post I paired these with my uh, mustard wilder shirt and my little red grandad knitted vest and I just love the red clashing with the mustard I just love that colour but as I say it's a great colour in my wardrobe I can wear these with so many other things now the wide leg pants I'll take them off the hanger and I'll show you a little bit close up I'll pop a picture up of the fabric as well but I'll also show you it's got an embossed paisley which I think is really unusual and it's quite a fine, let's hope that you can catch that on the camera, it's a very fine corduroy, so very very delicate, very very pretty and it's, I would say it is medium weight, a light medium weight, it's, it's you know it's a really lovely weight of corduroy, nothing, nothing too heavy or wintry type of thing and it's a free pattern the wide leg pants this is my third pair I've made another pair in cerise pink corduroy and I've also made a pair in denim absolutely love them and I am going to do a, a separate vlog to go, go into more detail on the wide leg pants on how I style them and how I am absolutely incorporating them into my wardrobe and I absolutely love them so I will be doing a separate vlog on that how to style them because sometimes you know you make things and you think, well, how am I going to wear them? What am I going to style them with? So that will be coming as well. But they're just it's just a great, great pattern from the Peppermint magazine. And it's a free pattern too. And I am considering also, if you let me know in the comments box below, if you'd like me to do a sew with me, because I think I'm going to make myself another pair and maybe some medium weight linen. So if you'd like me to do a sew with me, I can then film it and obviously run it alongside how to make them so if you ever fancied making them and you weren't quite sure because obviously there's the fly there's the button 
type of thing and obviously the pockets with the pocket bags if you were a little bit daunted by all that I thought well I could do it into a sew with me video and then it would help you if you fancy making them so let me know in the comments box below and if I get enough interest I will definitely do that so yeah so I did as I say I look I raised the leg on mine so I took a couple of inches chopped them off because I wanted them to be above my ankle and um really really lovely pattern as I say my third pair and because they were corduroy I didn't want the pocket lining to be too bulky but I don't think it would have been any way with this fabric because I say it's a really lovely weight fabric but I just lined mine with some pretty woven viscose floral viscose that I've got I've got like kept scraps of all my wovens that's not not big enough to make a garment with but big enough to do a little pretty pretty pocket linings and things like that so I am making use of all those and yeah I just love them they've got pretty darts at the back so it just gives you a little bit of shaping and fly opening with the zip don't be daunted by that it really is a really simple process and then you have the fly cover there really really simple process follow it step by step and because obviously they're a wide leg pant, I didn't want to feel, you might, I didn't want to feel I was going to be swamped in them. But because they're a lovely fit all the way down the hips and then they'll, they'll widen out or from the legs downwards, you've got that lovely fit so you don't look swamped in them because obviously some wide leg pants you can just look like you're wearing a skirt because of that, you know, there's that much volume in them. Well these are, they're lovely, like I say, shape leafs down the hips. And you've got the darts at the back to give a little bit more shape and then obviously the legs flare out from there so and they are a really nice fit they fit me like a glove i did size what size did i do i can't remember what size i did now i'm just checking to see what size i did i did size c which is a waist of 28 inch and a 37 inch hip with a finished garment measurement of 29 and a quarter waist. Well, I'm a 29 waist and I'm a 39 hip and with a 39 and a quarter hip. So I went for size C based on the finished garment. And as I say, these fit me like a glove. So if you're wondering what size to go for, I'm a 29 waist, 39 hip, and I went for size C. And there's a little drawing, line drawing, see? So, and yeah so very very flattering all the way to the hip area and then the widen out from there and it's even better download it for free from the peppermint magazine online so there they are there great and it comes a skill level two which i would say is pretty accurate so quite good for confident beginners i would say definitely give it a go so yeah so that's my blog post for felicity fabrics these wide leg pants and I've got so many different outfits I've created uh, with these pants already. And as I say, I'll do that in a separate vlog, how I've styled them and how I've managed to utilise them in my wardrobe. So yeah, so really enjoyed making them. As I say, there was my third pair and they won't be my last. Yeah, iron up some linen over there. So I think I fancy some linen. And can you see how well it goes already with my pretty blouse that I've made? So yeah, so I'll come on to the blouse last. And um, also I'm a blogger for Minerva.com and for this month's project, in fact both of these both of these gorgeous floral fabrics are Minerva fabrics and I obviously ordered floral because as I say I love a floral. And um, I ordered this. I ordered this, and it's a broadcloth, so it's one hundred percent cotton, but it's a broadcloth. Which I thought, well, what's what's a broadcloth? I thought I'll, I'll order it to see what it is. And it really, it's just like a cotton. It's like a cotton poplin, but a little bit more. I would say a tiny fraction, a bit more firmer than a cotton poplin. So very, very similar, but a little bit more substance to it. Now. I am going to tell the truth here. I haven't pre-washed. I didn't pre-wash the fabric because I just be bothered i just wanted to make it but yeah it's just gorgeous a gorgeous fabric to sew with i'm just looking at it there on the screen and so i just love the print it's such a vintage old-fashioned touch to it i think and this is my primrose dress so if you follow me if you follow me you know i'd like to make my own patterns now i'll just draft my own things and this is my primrose dress and i've made a couple of these and i've got a couple more hanging behind me if you saw my 
video on my duvet dress. I made this one out of the duvet. And then I also made this one. This is our co cotton poplin, actually. This is a Rose and Hubble cotton poplin. And a very, very, yet yeah, similar. And I would say the broad, this one, the broadcloth, is just that fraction more substance to it, if you know what I mean. A little bit more, no, I wouldn't say weight, just a little bit more substance to it, but very, very marginal. I saw, now I know what broad cloth is like, so I've opened my fabric repertoire a little bit more now. And as I say, I just love this dress. I just love how feminine it is. It's got, I've, I've created it with that gorgeous ruffle around the neckline, the ruffle on the sleeves and just the gathered skirt with pockets in and it's just got the zip the zip back fastening oh, i just feel absolutely pretty as a picture when i wore this pop some pictures up of me wearing it just with my jeans and my brown loafers and i just felt you know when you put things on sometimes i think i put my mustard raggy brooch on and you know sometimes when you put an outfit on you just think oh i feel so lovely in this well when i put this on i just thought oh i feel so pretty in it i felt like Skipping through a meadow of flowers. Well, I haven't got a meadow of flowers anytime soon, I don't think, but yeah, that's how I felt. And it's just a beautiful fabric, and it's just got all these gorgeous muted colours of yesteryear in it. And the colours in there are also my colours. So there's the burnt orange, which is my colour, there's the tealy blue in the flower as well, there's the mustard as well, and there's like the sagey green background of all my colours. And just absolutely love it. I really, I'm really, I'm in love with this print. So yeah, so that's what I've been making. And again, there's a blog post on Minerva.com on a few more pictures of this and how how I found the fabric and etc. So please join me over there and come and follow me over at Minerva and say hello. And um, yeah, so now I know what broadcloth is. So I'll say this has got the most crispness in the three the fabrics. Then you've got the cotton poplin, which is, this is what I've got on, and the lawn, which is more buttery soft. They're all very similar and all beautiful to sew with. If you're a beginner at sewing, I would highly recommend you go for something like this, the lawn, the poplin, the broadcloth, gingham, things like that, because they don't slip slide around on the sewing machine, beautiful to handle, and they don't fray as much. And sometimes if you pick something that is a bit, a little bit more drapey, a little bit more slippery to handle and can chew a little bit up on the machine, that can proper put you off, especially if you're just new to dressmaking. So I would highly recommend you go with something like this. So that was my other blog make, my primrose dress. And I'd love to bring this out in a sewing pattern. I'm not sure which one to work on next because I've got this that I'm wearing. So I shall show you this, and again, this is Minerva fabric, and there's a blog post for this too. And how beautiful is this fabric? This is a cotton lawn. This is a Robert Kaufman cotton lawn, and it's the most 70s. I think it's got such a great 70s vibe to it. And again, it's got my colors, the oranges and the muted the muted golds and the pinks and oh, as soon as I got it I absolutely loved it and I thought I'm going to have a go at experimenting and making another like dress with it but because it was so narrow it was very very narrow fabric I didn't have enough to do make it into a dress so I made it into this gorgeous pretty blouse so this is version one so if you know me you know I love a ruffle love a ruffle love a collar detail, love a sleeve detail. So for this draft, this design, I thought I'm going to go for a proper full-on ruffle rather than, you know, like the short ruffle, like a flouncy ruffle around the neck. So my plans went out the window because obviously I wanted to make a dress. My plan in my head was I'm going to make a gorgeous midi, midi maxi length summer dress in this. Well, obviously, I had nowhere near enough to make a dress at all, as you can see, short to short blouse. So that really scuppered me. That put me way off kilt. So I had to go from a dress in my head to something else, and it transformed into this blouse. 
I just like, I, I get to the cutting table, I get my paper out, I get my pencil out, my ruler out, and that's it, off I go. And I came up with this. This is draft one, and this is with the button band at the back, and obviously the rough around the neck, and like a gorgeous elastic detail on like a quite a billowy sleeve and then I've got tiny tiny little ruffled frill along the bottom purely because I didn't have enough fabric so I absolutely love the neck ruffle and the slit well I love it all absolutely love it all but I just thought the button detail down the back is far too pretty to be at the back so I thought right I'm going to make version two I'm going to put the button down the front hello version two also, the ruffle on the neck wasn't quite ruffly, wasn't quite enough gather for me. I didn't do enough on the calculation when I calculated the neck, the neck circumference and what have you. So I made it slightly longer on version two, which is much better. Button band down the front, so I completely redrafted it, and a longer skirt because it was more fabric. This is I still had two meters of fabric, had two meters of this. I had two meters of this which is cotton poplin because it was wider i had more fabric to play with but still not enough to make a dress so that was version one which i absolutely love and now i'm wearing version two which i absolutely love in this gorgeous this is again rose and hubble um, cotton poplin perfect fabric for this type of blouse and this again is just above the knee Put some pictures up so again, I couldn't do with the dress, but it's good practice because obviously I've perfected the pattern, I think now. So all I need to do now is make it again, get long, get more fabric. I'm probably going to need two and a half meters of a wider fabric, three meters if it was a narrower fabric. So I've got all that to work out and calculate and then make it down into a gorgeous midi, I would say midi length, mid calf length dress and put some pockets in. I wanted to put some pockets in this length which I could have done, um, but I didn't have enough fabric and also the pockets would have just been teetering above the hemline, you know, above the hemline and I didn't want them poking out below the length of the dress. So pockets will be going in the next one when I do it longer. But I just think with a button band at the front, it makes more of a feature. Love the elastic on the sleeves, the billowy sleeves. I was going to do some shearing. But I just went for one strip of elastic which is stitched in and I quite like the effect of that so it's you know nice gathered sleeve with the lovely it kind of replicates the, the cuff area this ruffle bit kind of replicates this and it obviously it replicates type of thing you know all like goes together which I really like so um yeah, I'm really, really loving the sleeves. I love the length of the sleeves too. Great, you can layer, I can layer this top in the winter, the cooler months, with a long sleeve skinny. Obviously wear them bare arms and I love the length of them so it covers my not very toned upper arms, which I don't have very good upper, toned upper arms at all. So it covers them too. And I was thinking, and I'm getting a little bit above myself here, but I was thinking if I do eventually down the line, bring this out into a sewing pattern, I could then maybe have view A button down the back and view B button down the front longer version I mean listen to me getting above myself I thought well that could be an idea so I could offer a sewing pattern with a couple of views and variations on how to make it so that's something I'm working on Yeah, so really please, I really love the fact that I've gone for making a dress in my head for a design. I didn't have enough fabric and I've come out and created this instead. So I'm absolutely love, loving that creative side. Just the freedom of, well, you know, you can't make that because you don't have that fabric. So let's go and make something else. So yeah, so that's what I've been sewing this week. So all in all, I've got a cute little outfit there. How well do these go? So the little outfit coming there, as I say, it'll be in a the vlog on how I style the wide leg pants. And please let me know too if you would like me to do a little bit of a sew along, come sew with me vlog on the wide leg pants. I'll definitely do that because I am making another pair in linen. So if I'm going to make another pair in linen, I'd like me to do it. I'll film it at the same time and share it with you. 
so let me know. But yeah, so that's today's vlog. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you just found me and come and say hello over on Instagram. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you on my next sewing vlog. Leave all the comments in the box below. If you'd like me to do anything at all, let me know and I shall certainly add it to the list. But until the next time, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you like my little floral extravaganza and I shall see you on my next sewing video. Bye for now.